Hi, I'm Jo Mullins and you're on Bent TV Studio Q. Tonight I'm at the AGMC's Multicultural Conference. We're going to hear from a few of the panel speakers and we're also going to see some of the opening night festivities. So thank you very much. Um, we'll also have the Melbourne Gay and Lesbian Chorus. So again, once again, uh, to the chorus, thank you very much for um, giving us the honour and the pri privilege to open, opening, uh, to open the launch here tonight. To Luke Gallagher, our MC, and he will be entertaining us a bit. I heard him be briefly before, and it was fantastic. So thank you very much. Um, to Fong Nguyen, Chair of the Ethnic Communities Council, um, I have, and I know a lot of my other commu committee members have high regard for you, um, and we thank you, and um, we look forward to your words of wisdom, but not only, only your words of wisdom, also the acts that you uh, follow up with. So thank you very much for being with us here tonight. We'd also like to thank Graham Minnis, um, the Australian Human Rights Com Commissioner. I didn't see you come in, so I'm sorry. Graham, thank you. Thank you very much. It is a great honour for us to have a person of um, your calibre here amongst us so um, and we also look forward to hearing your words of wisdom and we know that um, the Australian Human Rights Commission is doing um, many many things for gay and lesbians in this community in this country so so thank you very much enjoy and um, we will see you over the next two days and thank you for attending with me I have Uma Kali Shakti Umar was a presenter at the 2004 conference and is also presenting at this year's conference. Right. Umar, can you tell us what you got out of the 2004 conference? Well, first of all, I'd like to say kia ora, ni sambula vinaka, uh, malole lele, talo falava, and namaste. Now, um, I've got a lot out of the conference. It's so, so exciting to be with so many people that you have so much in common. Even though we come from such diverse cultures, languages, backgrounds, countries, you name it, we're it, it's fantastic. We're a salad full of exciting colours and tastes and flavours. I'm always into food. but. And that was part of what I enjoyed about the conference last time, what we had in common and learning what is different and what does it really mean. So that's why I came back. 
And what is your main message for the 2006 conference? Well, the, the um, things I'm speaking about, first of all, I'm going to be one of the performers. Um, I'm hoping to, my play that I've written will be performed and maybe do some poetry. I'm also going to be doing a discussion um, about what does it mean to be ageing and queer and cold. So what are our issues, what does it mean, uh, what communities can we be part of and how do we reclaim our cultures and backgrounds. So that's what I'll be involved in. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Uma. No worries. And I hope more people come along and enjoy it. It's fantastic to have this kind of and, occasion. And I hope your play goes very well. Thank you. Thank you. With me now I have Fong Nguyen, who is the President of the Ethnic Community Council of Victoria. Fong, you gave a presentation earlier. Can you tell us some of the main points of your presentation? Yes, I think the, the main points I, I made uh, in my speech was, uh, first of all, it's important to um, the theme of the conference. This is uh, a very important theme. And it's also, it's all follow up from the inaugural conference that two years ago, when we all agreed that it's uh, in order to um, overcome the difficulties that facing the cow communities, uh, cow gay and lesbians, it's important that we come up with strategy, with empowering strategies, and I think it's important to good to see the conference, the second conference, focus on that. And what do you hope will be the overall outcome of this conference? I think it's important that for for many culturally and linguistically gay and lesbian communities in our, in our midst, many of them facing many difficulties within their own communities because of religious or cultural reasons. It's important that we create a forum in which they can share their experiences and then hopefully through those shared experiences we can also share strategies. And I think it's important in the next couple of days we want to hear that and uh, hopefully, and I think another thing is, it's important to see the AGMC to join the, uh, the Ethnic Community Council. And I think it should be happening throughout Australia. And so that we can join in, in the same purpose of diversity, based on diversity. If we unite it, we, we are much stronger. And many of the researches and the need need to be done properly through researchers. And I don't think that AGMC alone can, can ever gain those resource funding, which is often uh, governments uh, run out miles from funding for AG, you know, gay and lesbian on research because of political, you know, uh, ramifications. So by joining with ECCV and other ethnic communities council throughout Australia, we can get that done without, you know, uh, the AGMC have to do it themselves. That's fabulous. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's segment and we hope everybody at the conference had an enjoyable and educational experience. Also, Bent TV is looking for new volunteers and we would love to have some volunteers from the multicultural community join us. If you'd like to join us, email feedback at benttv.org.au. We'd love to hear from you. We're here in the hallowed halls of our beloved Chapel Off Chapel, the uh, site of uh, much talent on the stage, and we're here with more talent on the stage tonight, the UK sensation, Dolly Diamond. Dolly. Hello. Welcome back to Studio Q and to Melbourne. Lovely to be here. Now, we chatted to you briefly last year, and you must be getting over here pretty much every year now, are you? Every once a year. This has been twice this year. I'm a glutton for punishment. You are. You are. And I believe you do have some, uh, some Melbourne connections from your past. Oh, yes. Um, Perhaps a very good friend of yours who had some roots here, perhaps grew up in Melbourne. Many roots, yes. Yes. Um, do you do you still uh, like getting back to Australia? And I do you still call Australia home. You yes. do? Yes. Oh, very much so. I am. Um, I, as you say, I grew up here, so um, it'll always have a p special place in my heart. Do you find yourself thinking more like an Australian or a Brit these days, or is there much difference? Oh well, let's not go that far. No, <laughs> I, uh, there's a, uh, I don't think there is much of a difference when it comes to comedy. Mm. I think Australians know how to have a good laugh at themselves and other people, mm. as do British people. Definitely. Which is one of the reasons I love coming here because they've got a great sense of humour. Certainly. Have you played in the US? I have. Um, not not terribly much. New York, I have. Mm. Uh, other than that, I uh, I think that's about it. Um, in this in this get up. 
Do you find them as easy to play with or to play to as Australian? Well, so to speak. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, I, I do, I guess. That whole thing of Americans don't understand irony, I think, is, is, is true and not true. I think some people don't, wherever you are in the world. The and uh, yeah. Exactly, yes. So um, I think you can get funny people everywhere. Of and uh, uh, well, New Yorkers are, are, are a breed amongst themselves anyway. Definitely. A bit like Londoners, would you say? Yes, yeah, so, um, and these days it's everywhere. It's just so multicultural anyway, isn't it? There's no um, place that's just typical of one particular you know, nationality. It's a mixture, isn't it? A mixed yeah, bag. We're not homogenous anymore. No, I don't think Mix. I ever was. <laughs> not homogenous anyway. So do you have a regular gig in Britain, a regular venue or the regular crowd you play to? Regular places, yes. Um, we, we, it's a different sort of atmosphere, different sort of uh, cabaret circuit's quite different. You play pubs and clubs and things like that. You do play venues if you, if you book them yourself, like I've done here at Chapel. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you just go to places that you booked at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock or whatever it is, and everything sort of stops, and then they all stand and watch you, and if you're good, they'll mm. stand and watch you, or if you're rubbish, they'll turn away and carry on with what they're well, doing. Back in the old days, I, 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 working with Julian Clary, Ah. And he did a particular place in um, North London, in Camden, one of the oldest cabaret venues called the Black Cap. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, do you know it? Oh, yes, I do. Right, oh, you've been around. And uh, oh, he played there and they turned their back on him because oh. they thought he was rubbish. Oh. Many have done the same since. But <laughs> I think that's the point, isn't it? You can be um, at whatever level and uh, if people don't want to see you and they don't think you're up to it that night, mm. then they'll turn their back on you. And Fair enough. So you worked with Julian pre-Sticky Moments days and all No, that. no, no. Um, post. Post? Yes, I'm not that old. And was he a love to work with or was Most he Most of the was time, I think. Like, he's a definitely a diva. <laughs> um, but like us all, he has his moments. Of course. You know? Sticky moments. Well, mm. I'd say, thankfully I didn't see too many of those. Oh, really? Oh, that's a shame. No, well, maybe not, not my cup thing. of tea. <laughs> Are you a diva? No. No? I think I'm quite easy, I, quite easy to work with. Well, you say you really. Are going to push me for it? Oh. Going to cause trouble? Maybe. <laughs> no, no. I think that old adage of, you know, it's hard on the way up, harder on the way down, you know. So I just think it's nicer to be nicer to people, isn't it? Well, I think you get further, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. So, do you, being an A grade uh, star as you are in the UK, um, do you go to many of the, the A grade do's, rub shoulders, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, with the true divas, or uh, do you steer clear of that scene? Are you? I don't think I'm invited to most of them, quite really? frankly, no. I've got to be honest, there's no point lying. <laughs> I'll go on. <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, well, I've, I've done my share, share of uh, red carpets mm. and. Uh, vacuuming them generally yeah. not, not um not terribly many invitations coming on my on my doormat oh that's a shame i well, know maybe. well i don't really care i think i get out and, and rough it mm. you know? well you're in the real world aren't you absolutely yeah uh, t uh, cross paths with graham norton the big end. i have done yes he was mm. very sweet in fact um not not long before I came out here, I saw him. Oh, really? How's yes. he going? He's on the BBC now, isn't he? Yes, he is. Uh, I preferred him when he was on Channel 4, I've got to be honest. Has it changed? Um... Well, he was doing it, it was once a week, yep. uh, the show. And then um, he went to uh, five nights a week. And I think when you water something down that much, it's going to lose a little bit of um, value, isn't it? Well, it's like anything. You have too much of any good thing, it's boring, isn't it? Exactly. Mm. Maybe not everything, but I know what you mean. And, uh, <laughs> did... Um, so five nights and now he's on the BBC and he does um, sort of variety one-off kind of special things or uh, we had a recently had a show called How to Solve a Problem Like Maria, oh. which was to find the new Maria for The Sound of Music in the West End. The new, oh, right. And Who did he they hosted that. So what do you think of all this reality telly? I love it. Do you? Yes. Well, we have, uh, we have the Idols, of course, which oh, I've been yeah. watching here, but we have um, one called The X Factor. Yeah. And uh, did you have that? We didn't work here, did it? Didn't. Daniel no. McPherson, despite having lovely Daniel hosting, yes, did not work. I like him. Mm, very nice boy. No, it's, um, but Simon Cowell, is, it's, mm. it's one of his. Mr and, uh, Charm. Yeah. yeah, well, I like him, you see. Mm. I think anyone that's that honest, well, and sometimes it is brutal, but then if you don't watch it. Exactly. It's like this sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, oh, well, Your exactly. viewers hear it. We are brutal too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can be. Yeah, I haven't felt you'd be brutal with me today. Oh, would you like to? Not so much. No, OK. <laughs> now, you are um, credited as a drag queen in the press. Does that sit well with you? Because you are, in fact, perhaps a cut above the rest. You sing your own material um, rather than lip syncing. Do you think the term drag queen is still appropriate? Or yes, I do. I, yeah? I mean, I, I do and I don't. I think it depends how you view... It's like being called um, 
a name by, if, if your friend calls you something, if it, I could call you a poof or something like that, but if it's done on the street and meant in a derogatory way, mm. then it can be offensive and horrible. I think, um, yeah. say with, oh, you're a drag queen, you know, it, it depends how you say it. It's and and, you say it, and yeah. also, you know, what you, what, what you do in your act and things like that. I do mm. sing live, but I mean, I love, I, I go and see Paris and Rita and Miss Barbara Quicksand and Candy and all of those. I love them all and they mime and, it's, and they're fabulous. They were icons to me, if you like, from when I was growing up. Oh, wow. They're all a lot older than I am, but they're still <laughs> wonderful. And, um, but I, no, I love it, but I, I do sing live and it is slightly different. It is stand up as well. Mm. Not hilariously funny today, but it has been, um, you know, the show is and uh, so it is different. But drag, I guess that's okay, really. I mean, you know. Now, the English Australian divide, I'm going to ask you the hard questions right? now. Vegemite or Marmite? Oh, Marmite. Marmite? Yes. Yeah, why? Just because I prefer it. I don't, I don't haven't studied. It's I not quite as harsh, is it? it? No, I, I, mean, I do like both, but you asked me to pick one or the other, so <laughs> I'm going to go with Marmite. Marks and Sparks or Kmart? Hmm. Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I'm quite thrifty at times. <laughs> but I mean, Marks and Sparks does have some good quality stuff. Well, like, everybody who comes here, the women say you can't get decent underwear here. Is that true? No. No, I didn't think so. No, absolutely not. But, I mean, Marks and Spencer's does um, wonderful food. If you have your oh, food, yes, fabulous the food, food so aren't they? that's good. And I now, don't think I'd eat at Kmart. No, <laughs> I don't think you can eat at Kmart no, anymore, the thankfully. No, saying I'm... <laughs> Go on. Hard question now. Summer Christmases or winter Christmases? <sighs> mm, that is a tricky one, isn't mm. it? Um, well... I guess winter Christmases. And why? Because I can have that fun festive Christmas feeling and then come out here for January and do the whole midsummer thing. Yeah. So I, like I get the best of both. You know, I'm quite lucky. I enjoy that Christmas at home. I've mm. just got a lovely house and lovely. You know, a lot of fire. And, yes. Mm. Um, central heating at least. And um, then I come out here January and then I get my, you know, summery feeling then mm. and it's still sort of Christmassy, isn't it? It is. It's a nice post to the yes. Regent Street shopping. Yes, mm. and also the cold, you don't seem to I don't seem to mind the cold when you've got something to look forward to like Christmas. No, exactly. I January don't. is rubbish. There's nothing to look it's all there. Oh, it's from there, isn't it? I, I even have a birthday in January, so oh. but that's rubbish too. Well, happy birthday for January Thank coming you. up very soon. Yes. Your good friend, your very good friend Michael. Mm -hmm. He's had quite a, a career back in the UK. He's mm -hmm. worked with some uh, inspirational and influential people. Um, I believe he played in Rocky Horror. Yeah, legend. I did it here the very first time. Really? Yes, with uh, Craig McLaughlin. Sorry, it's warm on this stage. It's it is. Very theatrical lighting. <laughs> oh, um, uh, with Craig McLaughlin. Would you like me to fan you? A fan not, not, no, not, not really. Oh, right. Could peel me a grape if you've got one. But if Craig McLaughlin and uh, then um, in Perth with Jason Donovan. So you've worked with all the, well, all the great big names. <laughs> well, actually, uh, Craig McLaughlin's in, uh, opening in a show in the UK with Lorna Luft. Okay. Very soon, uh, White Christmas. Oh, is, it, is that a panto? Or it'll is be, it, no, uh, it'll be, uh, well, I guess it will be, yes. Mm. Um, but I think it's a, I think it's a, a theatre production, but it's a, and it's a panto season, so I guess yeah. it isn't a panto, no, sorry. Fabulous. Uh, but it's in that theatrical, you know, time of year, panto time of year, isn't it? It is indeed, it is indeed. So Jason and Craig, were they uh, fun to work with? Very or? much. Yeah? Very, very much, yes. You were Rocky, was that your main role in the show? Or? Not when I did it here. No? No, no, um, I was in the, in the chorus. Ah. Um, because it was all celebrities, mm -hmm. Gina Riley and oh, Peter wow. Rosethorn and wow. all of that lot. Good vintage indeed. Yeah, very good. Lovely people. Richard O'Brien, you knew him, didn't you? Was Still he... do, yes. He's a very good friend. Is he a, uh, a true eccentric? Or... Very much, yes. Yeah. Mad as a box of frogs. Well, he must have been to come up with the concept in the first place. I, on a back of a cigarette packet, <laughs> it was, and, and a, in a pub, probably with enough drugs to kill a small family of donkeys inside of him. <laughs> And I'm sure he'll, and we can tell. We he'll can admit tell. that quite freely, I'm sure. <laughs> when can we expect you back on our shores? Well, I think maybe midsummer. Really? Yes. Wow. Another turn at uh, Carnival and Pride March? I hope so. Mm. I hope so, because that's the end, isn't it? That's the end of um, the midsummer. It is? That's yes. the culmination, the climax? No, I should be here. The February, the, the something. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, I think so then. 
Any urges to move back to Oz at all? No, because I get the best of both. You do. So, yeah. um, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to encourage more work here, though. So, Good. you know, a bit of, bit of sort of Kylie, hopefully. You know, work there, work here, work, you know, wherever it is. And, Dolly, you have charmed us both times we've talked to you. Oh, fabulous. And it's been an absolute pleasure. And I wish you good luck for tonight. Thank you. And hopefully we'll see you again at midsummer. You will. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you so much. Party policy and uh, the position that has been stated by the Premier is that the Labor Party here in Victoria opposes discrimination. Through the period since 1999 we've worked progressively with the community in a very good relationship to end discrimination and inequality through uh, making sure that all domestic uh, partnerships are removed from any sort of uh, discrimination or inequality in Victorian law. We mm -hmm. uh, amended 56 Acts of Parliament to remove discrimination from uh, domestic partnerships. We have set up a range of advisory groups uh, through the Attorney General and the Health Minister and so forth to work with the community to end discrimination and that remains our policy. As a result of that there have continued to be developments in the community about where we go next and the question of how to recognise appropriately domestic relationships is the next thing on the agenda. The Premier has said that uh, it hasn't been on the government's legislative agenda, this parliament, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the way in which we're working with the community at the end of this parliament and towards the beginning of the next one is that if we're returned to government we will uh, continue to work through that dialogue with organisations like the Victorian Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby mm -hmm. and, uh, and other uh, community groups to make sure that we can reach a consensus about the way that we can end discrimination, make sure that people's partnerships are appropriately recognised so that the legal and social issues that people need to have dealt with in their, in their relationships can be, uh, can be sorted out in a way that is uh, acceptable to the community and appropriate, but also within the constitutional framework that it is possible for a state government to mm. act within. Once we conclude our discussion and dialogue with the community, the government will make its own plan about how it implements change in this area. Andrew's bill has some features that I think are interesting and positive. I'm not personally convinced that it would withstand constitutional challenge mm -hmm. uh, for similar reasons to the way that the ACT legislation uh, fell foul of the federal government. Of course, the ACT legislation was challenged because the ACT is a territory and the federal government yeah. has particular power over territory law. But the federal government has constitutional power over anything relating to marriage. And our concern is that we make sure that we don't uh, produce any reform proposal that is going to be challenged in the High Court by the federal government and brought down because we, uh, in, in some way, attempt to replicate uh, a, uh, marriage, a marriage act uh, yeah. for, uh, uh, for people in Victoria. So we have to be careful about that. That would be a divisive thing. I don't think that the community uh, wants us to go down that path. I think what we need to do is make sure that we get something that uh, the community itself uh, feels is the appropriate way to, uh, to amend the law, to end discrimination and uh, end inequality. And we're certainly committed to that. And I think our record is one that we can be proud of in that regard. Right. I found it rather disappointing that the Alexander Bill didn't come forward before the election, but we have, a, we have a fairly open policy that we support full recognition across the entire party for, mm. for same-sex civil unions and, and or a registry set up, mm. depending on what we can get through. So yeah, civil unions is, is important. It's, it's an important issue, but it's one that's being put into the media. We have to look at all forms of discrimination, and our, our policy covers uh, a, very, um, a wide number of, mm -hmm. um, of these uh, laws which exist, which discriminate in all, in all forms of legislation. 
Well, I think civil unions are a great idea as a second option. Of course, marriage would be better mm -hmm. because the structures are set up around marriage where civil unions would require a whole different set of laws and it would become incredibly complex. But since Howard's made that impossible, uh, civil unions is the next best thing. Yeah, um, that would also solve the next problem I was going to ask you about. Um, under Victorian law, same-sex couples can't adopt children. That seems unfair, seeing as um, we're often asked to be foster parents. It is unfair. <laughs> there, uh, there's nothing I, else I can say. It's just totally unfair. So you'd be in favour of same-sex couples adopting? Absolutely. Well, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs>